The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 720 The Plot Resumes I've been embroiled in a little event recently, Gazelle lightly remarked, playing with his claws. You might have heard of it if you've been following the news. This little thing happened called Someone blowing up is Valdi's capital and Gashiva in front of hundreds of eyewitnesses. Her charred corpse is still there for everyone to see. It's not that easy to kill a goddess, of course, but every higher up in the Empire can see this is a major disaster that's only going to get worse. He smoothly lifted his eyes. And I hear your airship was seen by many in the area at the time. Imagine my surprise when word reached me my favorite tournament fighter was carrying on despite grievous injuries. Shinespark met his gaze without bowing her head. That's not a very reassuring tone to greet us in, Prince. Please tell us why you're here. Gazelle's lip trembled. No trust in an old friend? Aww. He feigned wiping a tear from his eye, then instantly grinned, showing teeth. It's just that you're a remarkably credible source in the Empire these days. Public sentiment can be what it will, but ships are arriving in Wilderwin from Varsidal with new stories of what happened, and your accounts from months ago line up quite accurately with what new travelers are saying. And people remember. In fact, with the amount of opportunism flying around in light of such a flagrant blow to Garshiva's image, with how many are picking sides and sticking to them, you might be one of the most trusted sources there is. I just wanted to get to you first, make sure no a lesser politicians came in and tried to extort a story out of you that benefited their whims. Maple, Amber, Gerardo, Shinespark, and Granada remained standing. That's kind of you, Shinespark said stiffly. I suppose you want us to testify to whatever version of events benefits you most, too. Let's not jump to conclusions. Gazelle winced, hurriedly shaking his paws. Did I say that? I didn't mean to say that at all. Not that I wouldn't appreciate it as a thank you, but I've already got my chickens in a row. His eyes narrowed dangerously. I have a sister, and this empire is her birthright. Protecting it as a charge until she's old enough to rule is my duty. Nothing more, and nothing less. Of course, I was being active already, but now that Garshiva's gone and got an egg on her face, I have um, plenty of problems to quash, shall we say. Everyone kept watching. So what is it you ask of us, Gerardo pressed, shifting a talon? Surely this isn't just a house call. Guilty as charged, Gazelle said back, putting his paws in the air. First off, I want the real story. You lot like to snoop around and stick your noses where they don't belong. That's how you did what you did in Einridge. Don't tell me there isn't a shred of tantalizing info you have on Isvaldi. Not that I'll ask you to testify. I'm more interested in a sounding board for ferreting out liars from the other provinces. Now, if you wanted to go public with some story, I might not stop you, but... Eh, that would be your idea, not mine. He clapped his paws. Second, I want you out of reach of any low-born, fanciful manipulators. The Empire is my toy, not theirs, when you're too powerful of a tool to leave laying around. From now on, we're going to stay in close contact, you and I, because I like to have checks on dangerous things, and anyone trying to wield you needs to meet a very unfortunate demise. His eyebrow arched. Catch my drift? Maple swallowed, looking at all her friends. We certainly don't want to get pulled into the Empire's politics. Gazelle just sighed. Without powerful friends, you're in danger of it. Kashiva's image just got rolled up, used as a rug, and incinerated with fire from the sky. And everyone will be making their moves. 
where lawlessness and anarchy used to be a chess game between the Council of Lords, Garshiva has already had to return to the capital in a diminished form to try and quell the chaos after one mere day of seeing personally to the survivors. So, why not tell me about the dear Admiral's injuries? Because it looks to me like trouble has already found you. She was caught on the edge of the explosion, Shinespark wearily said. We were there and do know about it. Gazelle winced. Painful way to go, but not too bad, Van. I'm sure she'll be fine. Now, what's the punchline? Shinespark looked to Maple. Maple instantly shrank. Why are you looking at me? Executive decision? Gerardo noticed the exchange, clearing his throat. We need allies. Shinespark, explain. Shinespark's face grew stiffer, and she nodded. Garshiva was summoned by Chauncey, connecting an illegal generator to the power grid as bait. He had things called nightmare modules that gave him enough power to try fighting her. Gazelle nodded along. All things I've heard, though... You knowing them is nice if I ever need corroboration that the Sarusians were behind all this. He stroked his chin. Anything else? Calm now. Chauncey didn't trust me. There must have been something of his you dug up I'm not aware of. And the rocket, Shinespark finished. It's a weapon used for delivering things quickly through the sky. This one must have been filled with explosives. The last one I saw was full of windigos. They're made by Yakistan. Gazelle's pupils grew so wide, they became round. Yak Yakistan? He mewled like a birthday kitten. For real? You say that like it's a good thing. Uh, Shine Spark nervously lifted a hoof. <laughs> Gazelle began to laugh and didn't stop. He doubled over, leaned backward, until his head was upside down, howling with mirth, and suddenly blinked and fell silent, finding himself nose to nose with a green-maned bat pony. Well, hello there, Admiral Valet. What? Up. Valet slowly... Slowly raised an eyebrow at everyone else in the room. Gazelle quickly surveyed her back. Hmm, not as damaged as it hurt, but a far cry from attractive. Now then, he flung himself out of the chair, twisting in midair and landing on his paws. I've changed my mind, he said with a curved, spreading grin, and flared his wings for emphasis. I'd love it if you testified. Spread that story to Stormhoof officials and then the masses. Not that I'd ever stoop to blackmail, but mm, I am the prince, the second most powerful sphinx in the empire. And we all know how far the first has just tumbled from her usual perch. In fact, some might even consider me stronger. So what could I pay you with for a little pack scratch here? Mm, tell me your heart's desires. Everyone suddenly blinked. Ah, Vully tilted her head. Look, I missed something. Not agreeing to anything until I know what I'm agreeing to, but... Are you offering to get one of those ultra-fancy healing potions? You know, help fix my back? Easy and done. Gazelle snapped his talons. What else? Shinespark slowly regarded them, words readying themselves on a tongue. How hard would it be for you to get us a writ of harmonic sanction? A border pass? Hmm... Gazelle stroked his chin. Are we talking just one or a whole ship's worth? Or are you more interested in being smuggled across than having permission to come and go as you please? Hmm. He snapped again. Well, call it a solid maybe. It's difficult because the border is an institution of their country, not ours, but hmm, I'll see what I can do. 
What else? How dangerous is us telling our story going to be to us? Schoensbach asked. About Osvaldi, testifying that a Yakakistani weapon was involved. We don't know for sure it was Yakakistan. Chauncey had a full napped Yakakistani scientist working for him. That rocket could have been launched for any number of reasons. Now, now, no need to mention that part. Gazelle silenced her with a raised paw. We'll go over things and make sure we know what you're going to say. And if anything, it'll make things safer for you, since everyone will know they can't coerce a bogus testimony out of you without obviously running counter to what you said before. So, what do you say? Just run with things now and call me in your debt until you think of more to ask for? Jordo cleared his throat before anyone else could respond. We tell that Stormhoof Military Council from before everything we know about Isvaldi, and in turn are indebted to you? Am I properly understanding the gist of this offer? Accurate enough, Gazelle's tail flicked. Gerardo glanced to the others. I think we could use a night to discuss this among ourselves. Everyone nodded. Fair enough, take your time. Gazelle rose to leave, lifting a wing and salute. In the meantime, try to avoid interactions with any parties who look too savory for their own good, would you? It's a cardinal rule that anyone honest about their dishonesty is far more trustworthy than someone dishonest about it. Good day. With that, he was gone, leaving everyone blinking. Okay, the lady declared, sagging into a chair Gazelle hadn't just been occupying. I'm gonna need a big, full version of everything that just happened. Well, Gazelle was here, Maple began, and he wants us to go to Stormhoof and testify about his Valdi. End of chapter 720